after kind of being stuck in this nihilistic phase where I was looking for something to satisfy my needs to kind of make the, all of the suffering that I was feeling worth it and get me out of a rut that I was kind of feeling like I was in. I realized that, you know, life really doesn't have any meaning and this can be really nihilistic as I said and I did get caught up in that kind of spiral and I had this big realization, you know, like nothing we really do matters, you know, we're not much more important than the rocks or the trees. We just create our kind of own, our, we create our own ideals and our own beliefs that kind of make us feel like we're more important than other things and more meaningful. Whereas at the end of the day, we're not. And this was kind of and a very negative view on it. And now I realize that life doesn't have any meaning at all. And we're not really much more important than anything else around us. But we have the creative ability in our minds to paint a life that we want to create our own meaning to use our lives as an expression as to create something that we want and bring that to realization and that's a much more beautiful kind of view of this kind of nihilistic view that i did have and i think a part of that is understanding yourself but also not setting your sights too low because at the end of the day we are going to die and we want to make the most of the time that we have here and we only have so much time to spend we only have so much things that we can do so we should really kind of focus on that and enjoy each day as much as we can because we don't know exactly how long that time is because of course it's limited and we do know that someday we are going to die and For me, this, this made me very daunted. It was very daunting to me for ages because I felt like I had to do something that would go against all of that, that would go against all this nihilism, that would somehow give me meaning. And now I realize that I have to create meaning in my own life. I have to create the experiences and the life that I want. And that there are certain rules, there are certain practical kind of physical constraints and rules and that sort of thing that I do have to get by to survive and even thrive in this world you know there's basic needs money you know so that you can live where you want so you can buy the things that you want so you can buy good food for yourself so you can have more time to free to do pursue the things that you want and even invest that into things that you want to do in the future And for me, you know, life will give you enough suffering. Life will give you enough pain as it is. It'll kind of give you these feedback kind of markers and you have all these emotions and these things that pop up and, you know, we can't just fight that. We can't just ignore these sorts of things because then they're going to build up and they're going to kind of get in the way. And there's kind of like this art of trying to live well, you know, that's why so many people have spent thousands and thousands of years on philosophy, on searching what is a good life and, and in doing all these sorts of things and finding all these pursuits. It's like a big picture because there's the, the health aspect of it, you know, how that contrib contributes to our well-being, our moods, how long we're going to live, how we're able to move in the world, how we're able to do things in the world. And then there's like relationships and depending on who you are, like what sort of ones fulfill you, what you need and, you know, like spending your whole time alone and being all by yourself, like I've done in the past, spending all my time alone, like I've done in the past has really limited me to get really stuck in my head and lose sight of a lot of things and not enjoy myself as much as possible. And of course, I'm not of course, but I tend to be someone who's more introverted and I like to spend a lot of my time alone. I like to, I prefer to be alone a lot of the time. And after so long with some people, you know, I can only bear so much socializing and it starts to get to me and just kind of irritate me. 
And I think that's because I just don't have any space in my mind to let these things kind of settle and it's always constantly overstimulated and then I just get really aggravated because I have all this stimulus and I can't sift through it. I can't, you know, let it sink in. And I realized that I needed to do some of these things that are a bit more social that so that I get out of my comfort zone, so that I do see those people every now and again, because otherwise I'm just going to keep ending up in my room, in my own thoughts all the time. And then, you know, although, you know, I'm spending my time studying things and spending my time working on my body, working on my health and working on my mind, that's only one component of life. And that social component just adds this kind of different perspective on it. And... It's interesting, the other day I went and watched the soccer, the old club that I used to play for here. And all of these emotions were coming up, you know, I was like, I was just going to watch. You know, maybe I still felt kind of pulled to play, and I still do. And watching it, all of these emotions popped up, but it was really weird spectating it and not being absorbed and engrossed in these emotions. And I saw people that were so rigid and so hell-bent on trying to score and trying to play well that they were limiting themselves. And I was like, that used to be me. That used to be me. I used to be all in my head, be so like dense and just strict and trying to win so much and trying to do good so much that I was getting in my own way, trying too hard, trying to go too fast that my legs couldn't keep up with me. And I wasn't analyzing the game and realizing, oh, how can I best use my energy? What are my strengths? What are other people's strengths? What are the weaknesses in this team? And how can I exploit them? <laughs> and now that I've watched it, I'm like, I want to get back into that. I want to do that again to see if I can be in the middle of this battle, be in the middle of all these emotions and find calm in myself and just enjoy the game and learn how to lose gracefully. Because in soccer, this one thing that I've really hated so, so much is just this competition and this hellbent on winning. And last year I went with this team and they were very hell-bent on winning and this was like a higher level and I was like trying to play a lot better, I was trying to be good in that level. But our team was so hell-bent on winning but they weren't willing to do anything to win and it was so frustrating because they'd be like this, oh, we've got to win. They'd be like this kind of like almost masochistic, like beating ourselves up, like we've got to win, we've got to train harder, we've got to do more and that sort of thing. And... You know, all that pressure and all that stuff was just getting to me. And I was like, why don't we just play football? Why don't we just enjoy this? Because at the end of the day, this is a game. There's going to be a team that wins. There's going to be a team that loses or both teams draw. You know, we can't really control the outcome of it. All we can do is play our best, do the best that we can, prepare as well as we can and just enjoy the game. Like, we shouldn't be hating our opponents. We shouldn't be, you know, yelling at them and like being so aggressive and just causing this fight because... What's the point of that? They're here to play football and I'm here to play football. So we should both be here to enjoy the game and to better each other and to enjoy the process of seeing where our skill level is at and kind of gauging it and then, you know, trying to beat them, trying to one-up them in the next game and that sort of thing. And that's what football should, football should be about to me. And I realise I may not play football in the future, but now that I'm here and I have this chance... You know, like I may not have this chance again and I kind of want to, I want to, no, kind of, I want to take this chance to see if I can implement all this stuff that I'm learning into something that I put so much effort into and learn the art of gracefully losing, learn the art of gracefully dying. And this, this will sound very weird, but you know, when you think about it, it's just, it's just a ball and if. If the ball goes in one side, then people will cheer. If the ball goes in the other top side, then the people moan and groan and complain. But at the end of the day, you know, it's just it's just a ball and it's just a game. And you should be done to enjoy it. Another realisation that I had that even though I was preaching about all these things, like, oh, I me as a person, you know, I'm very dynamic. I, I need all these different influences and that sort of thing. I need these different stimulus to kind of keep me satisfied, to keep me, you know, at peace with myself and the world and kind of ease my curiosity and that sort of thing. <laughs> but I was still kind of searching, you know, I spent time just listening to myself, just a lot of time kind of meditating and, and reflecting on myself or my patterns. 
and I found it really beneficial and I'm probably still going to continue some sort of practice in the future. But I realized that I was doing it so that I could find the thing or I could find a thing that would satisfy me, the thing, the passion, the purpose, the meaning. And there is none, like I said, you have to create it. And I realized that I was going against my own advice. I was looking for one thing to satisfy all my needs rather than, you know, this dynamic kind of perspective where I utilize all these different things and kind of implement them into my life. But having, narrowing it down, you know, to these fields that I have interest in, you know, like health, taking care of my body, working out, soccer, and that may evolve into like martial arts and sword fighting and kendo and that sort of thing, which is something that I want to get into in the future. But at the moment, I can I have more access to soccer and I still feel like I have something to fulfill or complete there and that I want to kind of get off my mind, tick off, tick off on my list. And then I have this kind of creative expressive side that wants to create music, that wants to write stories, that wants to write poetry, that wants to act and express something in ways that will move people, that will create this emotional response and get people to think on their lives. And then I have this kind of philosoph philosophic, philo philosophical, <laughs> philosophical side that's also kind of tied into that creativity and also the health kind of part that's like, what is at the root of all things? How can I live in a good way? What is the best perspective of this? How do I gain better perspective? And with every dip that I have, you know, it kind of sucks, but you just got to kind of ride it out and go through it as best as you can, as best as I can. And that's another thing that I realize. I always say you when I'm just talking about me, when I'm talking about I and myself, it's, it's kind of weird. It's like, you need to do this or you feel this. And it's like, I feel this, I need to do this. Anyway, that was just a side note. So in these little troughs, I find that, you know, sometimes I would get very, very caught up in these kind of negative things and avoid it rather than kind of writing it out and seeing what it's trying to show me. And a big part of that recently has just been me letting go of all these things that I've been attaching onto and just becoming more relaxed and more fluid and living in life in a way that's more conducive to myself and nature rather than trying to force things, trying to control things because <laughs> I kind of love this masculine idea that you can control things, you can bend things to your will. And then in a certain way you can, you can kind of choose what actions you do and those actions can produce certain results in certain scenarios and that sort of thing, but it's not guaranteed. And, you know, we got, I got to kind of learn to, you see, I said you, and then I changed it to I, I got to kind of learn to be more fluid with life and more, more at peace with it rather than trying to bend it to my will. And like I said, when I have that dip, when I had, when I let everything go, then I gain this new perspective, you know, like with soccer, I gain this new perspective of it. And, I've taken the step back from it, I've detached from it, and now I can go back and attach to it with this new mindset. And that's kind of this thing with philosophy is where your consciousness kind of raises in levels, your awareness and your knowledge raises in levels. And you don't just transcend the level that you were at, you transcend and include it in some sort of way. So at the moment, now that I've kind of gone past it, I've gone I've detached from it and now I want to attach back to it and see how my new mindset will kind of affect me in that kind of way and see where it, it, it takes me going forward. And this year, you know, I have the time to kind of do this and to spend time doing these kind of things that I want and picking and investing in these sorts of things. And I'm utilizing that time, but also being aware that it's kind of limited with what I can do at the moment. And also being aware in the future that I'm going to have to move on, that I'm going to have to let these things go and move on to the next thing in the other projects that I want to work on. But for now, I'm just working at getting back into the things that I was doing, but with this new perspective, this new experience, this new mindset and seeing how it goes for me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.